Right, Adam. Hmm? It's um, it's an auspicious day today, right? Yes, it's done. It's done. I think. Yeah. What's done? Mm -hmm. uh, we have been working on this injector, uh, Scott, Felix, and me, for um, the better part of six months, seven months, something like that. Um, where we got some design files from Yeppe, and then um, he just told us to make it. So actually, um, now that we finished this injector for the BPM-17, this is um, a really big milestone because we made a part which was designed in-house on a machine which was rebuilt in-house. So it's a really nice milestone in a very long and interesting road. Yeah, and in many ways as well, it seems. Yes, yes. But it's, it's definitely an achievement. Uh, it seems like, for now, uh, we didn't make any major oopsies. There are some blemishes. Um, we didn't champ through everything. Sorry about that for those who care a lot. We have all of the stuff to put the BPM-17 together. This is the first time we've done this. I, use, I haven't, this isn't the second try or no, no, redo. It, this is the just came first out, time. Uh, just came out of the machine. So if it doesn't, uh, if it doesn't fit, that's uh, an interesting experience. No, well, that fits. Uh, a bit anticlimactic. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, what is it that fits? Uh, the, the injector, this, uh, this is the injector plate that uh, faces towards the fire. We are, um, to oh, look yeah, at the, uh, no, no, it's refocused. Amazing. It's, uh, the, the fire goes in the tube. Yes. Pointing down. Yes. And then this one mixes the fuel and the oxygen, uh, with the impinging streams. So it's like two streams pointed at each other. And when they hit each other, they mix really okay. well. So that one goes in there. And then directs the flow of uh, of liquids down into the chamber. Now the thing is, here on the side, this is where the uh, the fuel goes in. So mm. that means there are long bores down this piece of metal, and then uh, some of these holes hit these uh, these bores. Right. So when the fuel goes in, comes out of the bore, and then uh, goes into the combustion chamber. On the back side, you have uh, another set of holes. There is a dome which is sitting on this. That one, which we will see in a second, go on. And uh, that one is uh, what uh, gets the oxidizer. So the oxidizer is here, the fuel is here, and the two liquids don't meet before they are somewhere in front of this plate. Um, yeah. So that one goes in there. So now hopefully the fuel side is sealed, and then when Scott puts on the uh, cap, then that's the oxidizer sealed. It's quite heavy. I don't think this will... Give up the ghost anytime soon. Yeah, and it seems to line up. So now we can put a bolt through, which should sandwich the whole thing together. Probably easier to go the other way, Adam. Mm. Okay. At the end, it does. It's just then you don't have to hold it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's uh, too exciting. One eternity later. It looks like something from oil rig. Not really it, it, I was gonna say it, it looks uh, stout. All right, um, Felix. So at the moment you've been working on these, yes, which are the um, part of the outer fuel gallery for this engine, um, which I've set you to you know try and weld some of it up. Yeah. And so these here are for these guys, and so they're gonna yeah sit like that, one there, one there, and one there, and we're gonna have these Y piece. And if you imagine this sitting like this, with a pipe that goes out, and then a bend, that then goes back and then grabs this, and then the same thing on the other side. So you're basically going to have, you know, this sort of shape uh, with the uh, four, I was going to say, outlets for this. And so we're using these fabulous dairy flanges for everything. Um, and making it like this means that we can pop it off basically yeah disconnect the yeah 
And this whole thing, what you explained, is just to distribute the fuel. Yes, into the fuel distribution inside of the yeah. The, 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 this guy, yeah, the thingamajig. <laughs> and the reason we have to do it this way is because uh, somebody, I guess us, chose to build the engine with these flanges, which means that we have to have these bolts. If you want to see any of this hardware coming together in person, test some flown rockets, or try our space capsules out for size, come visit us. We run public tours every weekend, so just check our website for availability and book your visit. We really hope to see more of you here. So Adam, what's um, I was gonna say, what's 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 next? Um, well, now that we cleaned the machine and finished uh, this thing up, as far as CNC work is concerned, the next thing will be um, this piece. Uh, Scott mentioned to me earlier uh, today that we need to drill some uh, holes for the fuel channel. This is going to be a part of the BPM twenty five engine, and uh, it's basically. Um, is it called a covering to get around the design uh, issue with some of the overlapping uh, right. welded on segments so um, this will definitely need to go on the CNC machine and after this one uh, we will probably start preparing tooling uh, fixturing and uh, other how is it called uh, yeah do that for, uh, for the uh, BPM25 injector because this one was great. We learned a lot from it. It took an obscenely long time. Uh, so now with all the lessons learned, we will uh, talk to Jeppe. Uh, I think Scott already mentioned to him that we should have a um, we should have a meeting all together and figure out what kind of manufacturability features we should build into the BPM twenty five engine. I heard so, you talk a lot about um, like dowel pins yeah, and, and rotating exactly, stuff. Exactly, because a lot of the trouble with this engine uh, injector was that uh, it was designed for the very specific purpose in mind to make the pipe engine work, but not that much thought was put into how we actually make the thing. No. So now we learned that lesson. We will move on with the BPM25 in a way that um, the we want the setups to be repeatable. We want uh, the fixturing to be um, uh, easily handleable on the machines we have because we will not have to make only one. We will have to make five. Yeah, that's true. So uh, in order to make our lives easier and maybe uh, move a bit faster with the project, we want to reuse as much of the G-codes as possible, but that's only possible if our fixturing is reliably repeated. So that's uh, that's what's next. That sounds amazing. Yeah, I, to to be honest, I cannot wait. Me neither. I, I want to see this like, burp out fire. Yes, but that's, that's also soonish. Now, uh, I think also uh, a lot of the focus shifts back to uh, Scott and electronics. Yes, because the test stand does, is it, missing it, a brain it, it at the moment. It needs a brain, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm sure that we could sit, you know, with manual handles and open yeah. the valves and stuff like that. But I think well, we should probably have head. a proper, yeah. uh, proper brain a for proper it. proper brain for it. But I can't wait to see this. I can't wait either. It's going to be amazing.